This game is all about picking up yo <laughs> Join the team. Hey team, it's the McGuire Review, and we've got a brand new one coming to Kickstarter very soon. This is from Flip Bear. You probably haven't heard a lot about this game just yet, but it is going to be hitting Kickstarter very soon. And frankly, if you are on the Kickstarter page watching this right now, then welcome. Uh, seems the Kickstarter is live. So this is Carrier, and it's it's a very interesting game. Uh, very, very simple from a mechanic perspective, but it, it is a lot of fun. Before we go any further, I am going to do a giveaway on this one. And this one I, I feel like is... I like doing these giveaways where we give away the prototype because if somebody wins the prototype, you're obviously getting a pretty much a full copy of this game. And I will say the prototype is in what I would refer... There's a lot of games that just this would be the production quality. It is a very, very high quality prototype. I think some of the little expansion components obviously are not, but you know, you're going to be getting all these expansion components. We'll talk about that. The full game, and I would say the game outside of the rule book is pretty much in a very close to production quality. All the chits, the, the wood bits, just everything is really, really well made for this prototype. Okay, so we're going to be doing a prototype giveaway. It's open worldwide, shipped to you for free. How do you enter? You subscribe here on YouTube, make a comment below. That gets you one ticket in the hat. If you want two tickets in the hat, and I would always say two tickets in the hat is probably better than one, you can follow me on Twitter. There will be a post for this on Twitter. Just find that. Uh, follow me on Twitter and like and retweet that post, and that'll get you the second ticket in the hat. Okay? Then I will add all that together, all of those different folks, and there'll be a random drawing. Bear will hit the button of fate, and one lucky team member will get shipped to them for free, open worldwide again, the the game the prototype okay Without any other questions all the details are in the description below all right so what is this game about um i'm gonna go through the components i'm gonna explain gameplay i am gonna lightly hit these uh little mini expansion rules just so you'll see what is offered there i'm not really gonna go deep into that and nor have i really played out thoroughly the expansion stuff i generally don't because these types of things can can vastly change through production. Uh, but I will give you a feel for what's kind of included right now. And then we'll go through, you know, the game. So component-wise, you're going to have a number of different uh, player characters that you can be. That's just represented on these little cards here. There is some different artwork, and each one has a different, you can say, uh, kind of a character class. So this one's a warrior. We got a king. We got a philosopher. A, a cleaner, a sorcerer, and an assassin. Now, nothing really makes those special, per se, outside of the artwork, and then you'll kind of find the cart that you... the, the color of the cart that you like the best that will kind of go with that character. Now, the one thing that you can do that, that is character-specific is some of these, like, let's say the warrior. Well, the warrior, it makes sense that the warrior's starting spot would be the kind of the gladiator ring arena here. But let's say that you didn't want to start there. You really can start in any of the player locations, which I have kind of set up here on the board. These are the only spots on this board that players, like, start the game, and that's sort of your area that you want to make sure gets cleaned up. Okay, so we'll talk more about that. So you got your character cards. You do have cards here that will represent your cart. So if you look at your little meeple here, you have a horse and a little cart that's being pulled by that horse. That cart is represented by this card, and this card can hold one, two, three, four different pieces of trash. This game is all about picking up yo trash, okay? So that's what that's going to be used for. This right here is the Sacred Altar. I do like that they included kind of a three-dimensional little build-type object here in the game. I, I'm always a fan of games that kind of do something like this. It is a dice tower as well, okay? And then you do have four dice that are included right here, which you will roll into uh, the tower, and they'll come out, and depending on if they're X's or O's, and I'll explain that here when we get to gameplay, it will either... Uh, allow trash to be left in your cart that you've picked up, or it will kind of get rid of that trash as you um, give your trash to the sacred altar. Oh, my trash is bestowed upon you. 
Okay, we'll swing right around here, and we've got the... Uh, I don't want to call these combat cards because they're not really combat cards, but these are the action cards that you will be able to pick up when it's your turn. You will draw one of these when it's your turn. You do have a hand size limit of four that you can have at one time. And we'll talk more about that when we get to the gameplay and the round. But these are cards that essentially will give you different little abilities and or things that you can use to kind of, you know, off put what others are doing in the game because it is a competitive game you are trying to be the winner of this game there's a single winter winner these tokens right here are cart band tokens you will start the game with one of these and then this is the active players token so this is just well, whoever's turn it is well, this will be sitting in front of you and you'll just kind of pass that around the table so you'll know whose turn it is uh, after you've taken all of your actions on the back here, it does list out exactly what you do on your turn. Okay, so we'll go right into that right after I explain uh, why the board looks the way that it does. So when you start the game, there is going to be areas of this board that are considered uh, just like general spaces, uh, which would be these areas right around the central location. The central location is the spot that you want to get to to dump your trash and when you get to that central location you will use one more movement or potentially a card that gives you that to be able to move into the sacred altar there you will roll your dice and see how much of your trash is accepted by the gods i don't know if it's the gods but that's just funny so you will have these areas that surround the central that will start with three pieces of trash all right they're more of just kind of hindrance and i'll talk that through here in a minute then you have the areas that are outside of that, the six different areas. This is up to a six-player game. Those areas will start with five pieces of trash, regardless of how many players are playing the game. Then you do have some corner spots here that I believe are referred to as free spaces that you can kind of just move through. Uh, but these are all the central areas of the, the game that need to be set up when you're ready to go. You then will obviously select your character. We'll just grab a, grab a couple here. And you will then grab the horses that will represent, you know, those the, those characters. Okay, so we're just going to go with, like, this color for, for this character and this color for this character. So you would place those, those horses where they are. And now this would be, essentially, those characters' area. Okay, so you'll you'll kind of you'll kind of put your card on that on that area there. I, th I find it easy to kind of just put the card sort of where your home base area is. So it makes it clear to you you remember as well as all the other players, because to win this game, you essentially have to have all the trash pieces picked up from your area, and those could be pieces you picked up and or other players moving through your area, because when you move into an area, you have to pick up one piece of trash if it's there. So your area has to be clear. And then you have to enter the center area and then enter the altar with an empty cart. Okay, so you'll start the game with these little with these little carts as well. That that's that's your cart that you'll fill up. Okay. And it isn't that you enter the altar and you have trash and then you roll the dice to try to see how much of that trash is emptied, and then you get lucky and you roll all the dice and all the trash empties up and now you have an empty cart. No. Your area has to be empty, and you have to enter the altar, per the rules, you have to enter the altar with an empty cart. So it isn't really that easy to do that, and that is essentially the entire game. Like, that is how you win the game. The only other way that you can win is if this deck runs out, then it gets to, okay, who's eliminated the most trash, who has the least amount of trash. There's like a number of rules that you go through to see who the winner is if this deck runs out. That's generally not going to happen because on your turn you're only going to draw one of these cards so you'd have to go a number of rounds before that would ever happen that would have to be a really long game that just you had a lot of strategic players playing that were just kind of screwing their neighbor over and over and over and you, you just couldn't be able to get to that win condition but that's you're generally going to be able to hit that win condition if you if you play the game right Okay, you just got to be really smart, and this game really comes down to being really smart about when do I pick up trash, how much trash do I pick up. You, you don't want to just go all in every time. And the reason is because once your cart is full, you can't move into another area that has trash. You always have, if you're moving into an area that has trash, you have to have at least one spot 
to be able to pick up trash when you move into that area. If you can't, then something can happen called a boom. You can also get boomed by cards, which essentially means your cart just almost like imagine your, your cartwheel like hits a pothole and all the trash falls out. And that's what will happen. All the trash in your area will fall out. Okay, so let's just jump right into gameplay here. So we're each going to grab one of these to start the game. This can be used as a like, hey, you can't move kind of kind of trick on another player that just doesn't allow them to move. Okay, and then you're going to figure out who's the last person that has cleaned up their room the most, and that's going to be the first player, and they're going to get... So let's just say here it's, it's, it's the cleaner. We'll just say that. So this is going to be first player. You're not going to start the game with any cards, the first thing you're going to do when it is your turn is you're going to draw cards. Now we'll go into the gameplay. So, we'll, you know, I'm the first player, so I flip my token over here and it says, pick up a card. So I can choose a card. Okay, sweet. So I got this card, uh, and they all have uh, artwork on them here. And you'll see on the overhead cam, I would just give a piece of feedback that in the production version of this game, this artwork needs to be pulled up a little bit, and this text needs to be bigger. It is extremely tiny on these cards and it's actually hard to read so this one here throw two trashes from your carrier tray to an opponent's tray just basically means you grab two and you blast it over here's some trash right they don't have to be adjacent they don't have to it just here's trash from my, from my carrier uh, that's what happens with this card and again i can play this card this round or i can just hang on to it again the hand size limit is four and there is some strategy in there in always having a hand size of three or four because you can play as many of these cards as you want when it's your turn. And you definitely want to have one of these cards in your hand that gives you an extra movement when you're going for the central location because then you can use your movement to get into the central location and throw it on your card to use the move to get to the altar. Otherwise, you got to wait until your next turn to be able to get to the altar. Okay, so that is the card that I drew. The second thing I'm going to do is decide on trash collection, okay? So I'm now going to say, well, i got five pieces of trash in my area. Do I want to load up my cart with four of them? Well, if I did that, the only place I could move is here because I don't have any more spots in my carriage and I have to pick up a piece of trash, at least one piece, if I move into an area that has trash. So I would be limited. So I could just load up four pieces and say, okay, I'm not moving this round. And I would literally have to wait until this spot or this spot freed up until I could move. And they may not make very good strategy in that for kind of round one. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take three pieces of trash. One, two, three. All right, that's how much trash I'm going to pick up and load. Decide whether to use your card. Uh, I'm not going to use my card. And move your wagon, roll the dice if relevant. Well, I'm not going to roll the dice because I'm not going for that yet. I'm now going to move because you can only move up, down, left, right. You can't go diagonal. So I'm going to move right here. And when I move there, I'm forced to pick up another single piece of trash. And now my cart is full. Now, once it gets all the way back around to me, I now have the ability, I have a full cart, I have now the ability to move into the central altar and start dumping trash. And I only have two pieces left on mine. Right when you dump the trash, you go back to your area, and then I'm going to pick up those two. And now I've met win condition if no one else has moved trash into my area, had a boom in my area where all of a sudden all the trash fell out of their cart in my area. So that's where a boom can some kind of, Sometimes a boom isn't always bad. A boom can kind of sabotage sometimes as well. I've done everything I need to do. It's now going to pass to the other player. We're going to draw a card. What do we get? Choose one opponent carrier to make it immobile for one round. Oh, excellent. Okay, I'm probably going to play that this round because I don't want them going there the next time. In a two-player game, this can move pretty fast. Okay, so now we're going to decide on crap, uh, trash collection. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to do one, two, three. I'm then going to move and pick up one more. Um, yes, I'm going to move and pick up one more. I'm then going to play my card which makes my opponent immovable for a round. So this card has now uh, been played and is out. Okay, it's now back to this player. Player is going to draw a card, choose one opponent's carry, make it immovable for one round. So that's a card that I have as well. Okay, this is interesting. I'm going to make them, I might make them boom. You know what? This is what I'm going to do. Okay, so I can't move for this round. I can't pick up any trash. 
So that really stopped me from getting where I need to go. So I'm going to fire back with this right here, which is throw two trashes from your carrier tray to an opponent's carrier tray. So I'm going to play this card. It's going to it's going to shoot over here. Well, this carrier's tray is full, which causes a boom, which means all of this stuff just like goosh, falls out and it all falls into this area. So now there's a ton in this area. There is only two in theirs, but there but there's a ton in this area where they're they're at right now. So then, then you may look at this and think, okay, well then isn't that better for this character? Because to win, you have to enter the altar with an empty cart and your area has to be empty. So on their next turn, they can enter the altar potentially, if they have a card to do that, or it's gonna take them two more turns, and they would have an empty cart, but then their territory would have two, so they'd zap back their territory, pick those two up, okay, now what? Now they got to move through a bunch of other areas, so then they won't have an empty cart. So you really have to do a lot of trash collection management over the course of the game. And again, this is just two players sort of trying to do their th thing and, and throwing trash in different areas. Imagine four to six players around the table all throwing trash everywhere, and then you as a player trying to navigate through that that onslaught of trash right it, it just that's where this game i think really can get a lot of fun it's definitely one of these beer and pretzel type games it's not going to be something that's like extremely difficult you're going to know how to play the game within a minute you're going to completely understand the game within one to two rounds and then it just becomes the strategy of how much trash do you pick up and win and which routes do you take to try to get that win condition and that's one of the things that i actually really like about this game I, I i'm finding that the more and more games i play over time i really like the games that are just it's like the, it's like a really well thought out specific mechanic that's executed on really really well versus a game that's just chocked full of mechanics that all hit 20 30 percent this game focuses on pretty much a singular mechanic, and it's all about... The whole game is revolved around just that. Okay, so it's going to be this player's turn. Uh, it's going to be over. Now we're going to go over to this player. I'm going to draw a card. I'm going to do just another round here, just to show. Um, you know, this is, the, this is the same card. I mean, I did a very good job shuffling this here for the... Again, so... Um, okay, this one says, throw one trash from your carrier to an opponent. So this is just throw one. So we'll have that. I don't have any. Um, I'm going to now need to under make a decision on um, if I want to pick up trash. And I'm going to pick up trash. I'm going to actually pick up uh, four pieces of trash. And then I'm going to and then I'm going to move. Now, I don't have a card to move in. So I'd have to wait until uh, my next turn. So my turn now would be effectively over. It's now this player's turn. This is now coming off, and I can move again. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a card. Uh, choose an opponent, make it a mobile for one round. And I'm going to grab these two pieces of trash, load up full. I'm going to move into the central area for my movement. I do not have anything that gives me another movement. However, I will go ahead and choose one carrier to... Uh, no, I will choose an opponent... Oh, they're both make it immobile. Now, a boom would be really effective here in this situation, because if you boom in the central area, and if I could just throw one piece over, it would be very effective, because what happens in the central area with a boom is it doesn't drop in the central area. It returns the player to their territory, and it puts the trash, instead of dropping it where they got boomed, it puts the trash on their territory. That's much more of a problem, because... Uh, you want to, you know, you need to have your area clean, so that that can really be a sneaky move there. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and use the uh, I immobilize this person because I don't want them on their next turn to be able to get to uh, the altar. So I'm going to immobilize them, and if we were playing one of the expansions, that would actually be very important because one of the expansions. Uh, it, it, it depends on how quickly you get there and you empty your cart, you'll get these torches. And if you get three of these torches, you can win the game. So that, that's important. That's an important mechanic. If you're playing a different style of this game, right? 
And I think they've nicely embedded that into the core rules to just kind of flow right into these little expansions if you want to play them. Okay, so we've got that going on now. They're locked down. The turn is now over. We're now over to this player. This player is going to draw a card and throw two trashes from your carrier to an opponent. Oh, so deadly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to play one of these cards because I can't move, so I can't enter the altar. And we're going to say, you know what? Have fun with that little move. I'm jolting two of my trashes just to really make uh, this this count over to you, causing a boom in your area because your, your cart was full. So again, strategically as a player, when you enter this, you might want to enter with only three pieces or two pieces because this can happen when you go greedy. So now all this trash gets dropped into this player's area and they get teleported back to their own home. So super deadly, right? And uh, essentially that would be my turn. Turn would be over. I choose not to move. I'm going to stay right there. Uh, so now we're over here. So I'm going to draw a card and it says, move your carrier to the location of another player's carrier. Nice. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up four trashes and I'm, ho I say, I don't know. I don't know what this other player has. So I'm going to get greedy again. I'm picking up four, four, four of them. I'm now just going to play this card and I'm going to move to the central location, right? It's like, hey, I'm back. What's up? I'm back with a full loaded cart. Now, I used the card, and this was powerful, because I used the card to move me to another player's location. I still technically have my movement, and I will use that movement. And if I wouldn't have had that, this player could have nailed me again with another throw trash in your cart, and I would have boomed again. Okay, but I got lucky here with the card and having my movement still. So now I've moved in to the sacred altar. I do have four pieces of trash. I will roll four die. For every one of the zeros that come up, it's a trash that goes off. For every one of the X's that come up, I didn't get to lose the trash. Okay, and oh wow, I got four zeros. Wow, so all four pieces of trash are now out and I have submitted those to the altar. They are now removed from the amount of trash that is on the board. So as more and more people throw to the altar, the movement and the success criteria to win becomes more and more attainable. Okay, so that's done. After that happens, um, I then will teleport back to my homeland. Okay, uh, and now my turn is effectively over. It is this player's turn. This is now removed. I'm going to, I say I'm going to stop, but then I get into it. Oh, another one. Uh, move your carrier to another person's location. So I'm going to not use this card because it's good for a boom. I'm already here. I'm going to go ahead and use my movement to move in. I'm only going to roll two dice this time because I only have two pieces of trash in my cart. Ah, two X's. Yeah, suck. Okay, so the trash was not able to be removed, so it stayed. Uh, my trash uh, offering was not accepted. So I then will teleport back to my player area and I wasn't able to move, remove these two pieces of trash. And my turn's over. That's everything that I needed to do for my turn. Okay? And then it would go back here and on and on and on. Again, you can see with just two players how this is sort of scaling and playing out. Imagine a whole table full of people all doing all of these, you know, ah, gotcha, gotcha, move trash. It really does become sort of this... It really is a fun game because it focuses very strictly on this simple single mechanic. Okay, here is the expansions. This is the last thing we're going to hit. It's a little baggy here of items. There's a number of different things that's that's on this that is going to be available, I believe. So we got the king's sign. Essentially, that is getting here and removing all your trash and getting torch lights. And after you get three of these torch lights, then you win the game. It's kind of a different. Um, game winning mechanic okay it's a, it's a, just a different way to win the game everything else stays about the same as far as how you're playing there is a returning stone potentially which allows um, you to return immediately to your character territory if you acquire that there's a number of basic movement tokens that can be included this part here it's probably the one that I like the best, which is called Relics. This one here is probably the one that I like the best out of all of the expansions they have here, which is called Relics. 
So there's the Herald Stone, Champion Shield, uh, Helmet of Mist, Eye of Wisdom, Ancient Monument, Siren Doll. These are really cool because they're different relics you can acquire, and each one of them gives you kind of a special ability or power that you can use in the game. Okay, which is pretty cool. Here on the back, we've got the God's Crow. This is kind of an ancient Greek sort of spin mix kind of expansion where you've got Mars, you've got Poseidon, Jupiter, Athena, Apollo, right? And each one of those uh, give you a different type of ability as well. So for Jupiter, the player who caused the boom selects a player. The selected pet player also booms. Athena, the player who caused the boom, collects two trash tokens from the boomed territory. So there's these extra things that will happen within this expansion that just kind of throw, it almost feels like it just kind of throws more chaos into the standard gameplay. And then you have additional action cards, and there's a number of additional action cards that are going to be added in as well over the course of the Kickstarter in the game. Okay? That is Carrier Team and how this game works. Again, kickstarting very, very soon. If you're watching this right now and we're on the Kickstarter, then congrats. You found it. Um, you know, these these aren't paid deals. I'm, I'm not paid anything for this video. We are doing the giveaway. Uh, and that's cool. Somebody's going to be able to get this. And, and it is neat because you now have the game for probably close to a year before anyone else is going to get the game that would have backed this. So it is a really special thing. Um, I could just keep this. It'd be fun for me to keep it, but this is kind of the way that I give back to the community if I can get these really nice prototypes like this. It's kind of a way to give back to you watching this video and being part of the team. So hopefully um, everybody takes advantage of this and you're able to get your hands on this prototype copy that we're going to give away. But it's a pretty cool game, as you can see yourself. You can make the decision if this is something that might be too light for you or you love it. It might be just perfect, but it is a fun game and it does utilize a really cool um, board management mechanic. So hit that like, hit the subscribe below to join the team. Keep rolling them crits. This has been the McGuire Review and we'll see you next time.